Well, after a little bit of a break, I think we're going to pick back up in Colossians chapter 2, um, where Paul's continuing on with his letter to the Colossians. And in this chapter, he begins to lay out for him, for them some of his concerns that he's had for this church in Colossae. Remember, the church in Colossae is a church a uh, group of people that he's never met before in person. They were actually, um, this church was begun by a man named Epaphras, who had most likely uh, heard the gospel from Paul in Ephesus during Paul's long ministry there in the city of Ephesus. Ephesus was only about 100 miles away from the city of Colossae, and it's likely that um, uh, Epaphras had carried the gospel from Ephesus back to um, this area of Colossae, Laodicea, Hierapolis, into these cities here. And so Paul in chapter 2 continues, he says, For I want you to know how great of a struggle I have for you and for those at Laodicea, and for all those who have not seen me face to face. Okay, so he's saying, look, I am worried about you. I'm struggling uh, on your behalf in prayer, in spiritual warfare. Um, my, I am concerned for you um, as a spiritual father for his spiritual children, or maybe in his case, because um, this was uh, uh, this church had begun through Epaphras, who had believed through Paul. It's almost like his spiritual grandchildren. So he's concerned for them. I'm, I'm concerned for you, right? And and for those at Laodicea, all you in the Lycene Valley who, who um, have not met me face to face. Um, he says that their hearts may be encouraged, being knit together in love to reach all the riches of full assurance and of understanding and the knowledge of God's mystery, which is Christ, in whom are hidden all the mysteries of wisdom and all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. Okay, and so Paul's saying, listen, I'm concerned about you. I'm worried about you. Um, I, I, you're always on my mind. You're always on my heart. You're always in my prayers. I'm going to battle for you in prayer. I'm interceding for you with the Lord Jesus. I'm asking for him that, that your hearts would be knit together in love, that you would be encouraged, that you'd reach all the fullness of under, uh, of, of all the full assurance of understanding and knowledge, okay, in Christ. And, and so, um, the only thing I relate this to maybe in my own life is, is just the concerns of a parent for their child, right? Um, I have three children, a 19 year old, 15 year old, and a six year old, and, um, they're all at different stages of their lives. But, um, one thing that every parent knows is, is whenever your kids are not right in front of you, whenever they're away from you, there's always just kind of this, um, feeling in your heart of, of concern for them. You think about them. You wonder how they're doing. You hope they're okay. You hope that someone doesn't take advantage of them, that they're not hurting them in some way, emotionally or physically or, or, or deceiving them or leading them astray. Or, you know, you just concern for them because you love them and you want the best for them. And this is, this is kind of the sentiment that Paul has for them. He says, I want you to know how great a struggle I have for you. Okay. Um, he says, um, I, I'm praying basically that you may be encouraged um, that, that, um, being knit together in love. So I want you guys to be unified. I'm praying that you would be unified, that although all these, um, external forces may be working against you, that you guys are knit together in love one for another, that you support one another, that you love one another, that you care for one another, that you meet each other's needs, that you help each other as you struggle, as you go through the things that you go through in, in life. Um, but also that you would reach the riches of full assurance of understanding and knowledge of God's mystery. We talked about this in the first chapter. God's mystery says, which is Christ. Okay. Now the reason he's addressing this, he's going to go on to talk about the two different sort of um, potential deceptions that were facing the Colossian church at this given time. Um, one of them was a sort of pre-Gnostic her heretical uh, message that was coming into the church saying that Jesus was only one way um, to, to God, only one way um, uh, to, to, to uh, commune with the divine, to find the, um, the mysteries of the universe, the spiritual wisdom and knowledge, that you could access those through Jesus, but also that you could, through med meditation and other practices, um, it, uh, you know, uh, reach a point of spiritual enlightenment where you could be given um, uh, wisdom and knowledge and learn these mysteries from other angelic, um, you know, spiritual beings that Christ was only one of them. There were many. Christ is basically equal to them. Um, Paul's addressed this in the first chapter, basically shooting that straight down. He's the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. By him, all things were created in heaven and on earth. Spiritual, uh, you know, so he just, he, he, he blows that out of the water saying Jesus is the creator. He is the divine. He is the, the second person of the eternal Godhead. He always has been, always will be. And, um, and so, 
He's saying, I, I, I'm praying that you would reach the full assurance of understanding the knowledge of, of the God's mystery, which is Christ. And he says, in whom, okay, in him, in Christ, are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. So in other words, you don't have to go looking somewhere else. You don't have to go as the Judaizers would tell you and find it in the law of Moses and in the Torah. You don't have to go as these uh, mystery cults would tell you and, and, and meditate and seek out um, demonic spirits in order to experience wisdom and knowledge and to have the fullness of that because Christ is all and he is in all. He says, in him are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. And I says, I say this in order that no one may delude you with plausible arguments. Okay, so this is the problem. This is the thing he's coming against right now, that, that you've got people coming in from the outside and they're preaching to you a different gospel and they're giving you a different message and they're trying to lead you astray from the simple message of the gospel, of faith in Christ, of holding fast to Christ and growing up in him. He's saying uh, there's, there's people trying to lead you astray from this. Okay, he says, um, I say this in order that no one may delude you with plausible arguments. And this is what we all face in today's world as well. Plausible arguments everywhere that you look. And he says, um, for though I am absent in body, yet am with you in spirit. Okay, so just like, look, I'm with you. My heart is there with you. I am with you in prayer. I'm interceding for you in the spirit. I'm praying against the demonic forces that would lead you astray. I'm asking for God's angelic protection, his divine protection, his spirit to be within you, to be filling you with his power and his wisdom and his knowledge and his love for him and for one another. And he's saying, um, though I'm absent with you, body, I'm with you. I'm right here with you in my heart. He says, and I'm, I'm rejoicing to see your good order and the firmness of your faith in Christ, right? You're not being led astray. You're not getting distracted. You're not adding all these other things to, to your faith in Christ. I'm rejoicing to see your good order and the firmness of your faith in Christ. And then he says in verse six, therefore, okay, based on all that, therefore, as you received Christ Jesus, so walk in him. This reminds me of Galatians, where he says, having, oh foolish Galatians, having begun in the spirit, will you be perfected by the flesh? You know, you began in the spirit and God saved you, justified you by grace, by faith, uh, by grace through faith in Christ Jesus. But now from, oh, I got it from here, God, I'm going to perfect myself through my works, through my obedience, my external obedience and adherence to the law. You know, he says, he says, no, just as you received Christ, the Lord, so walk in him. Okay. So this is the walk of faith that we have in Christ. The, the, we are never not in need of the gospel of Jesus Christ. A lot of times I think we think of the gospel as the message that, that the salvation, the call to salvation, right? That repent and believe in the Lord Jesus, be baptized in his name uh, for, the, for the remission of sins, that, that you can have eternal life, that when you die, you'll go to heaven, that that's the end of it. And then from then on, you know, there's, there's just, we go to church and we do some things. No, the gospel is everything. The gospel is all encompassing. The gospel is the entire message of the Bible from Genesis to Revelation. Um, every single bit of, of the Bible is the gospel, the, the story of God's redemption of all mankind and of his sanctification of us and eventually our glorification in Christ. He says, therefore, as you received Christ, so just by simple faith, the same way you walk in him. It's not complicated. It doesn't get more complicated after you, after you come to Christ. You, you continue to just trust in him by faith. That, that's what that, that, that word, you know, believing on him unto salvation, that's what that means is that you're, you're basically putting your trust in him, um, recognizing the fact that you can't do it yourself. You can't save yourself. You can't be good enough. You can't be holy enough. You can't be righteous enough. And so you're putting all of the weight, all of the, 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 the work of your salvation onto Christ by faith. You're allowing him to take that from you because he paid the price for it with his own blood. That continues to happen as we progress because you're not going to live a perfect Christian life whether you believe that or not. You're not going to suddenly in your life reach some point where you're perfectly sin sinless, where you never have a bad day, where you never you know, think a bad thought. Um, you are inherently sinful in your flesh, and yet you've been redeemed by Christ, right? The old things have passed away. All things have become new. But from the moment you're saved and justified by Christ Jesus, you're continually being sanctified, which means you're being, you're in a process of being made more like Jesus all the way to the point of your death and being one with him um, in, in eternal life. At that point, when Jesus returns, he catches us up to meet him in the air, then we're made like him. We're glorified. We're perfected with him. But he says, as you received Christ Jesus, so walk in him. Simple trust in Christ. 
for my salvation, for my sanctification, for my glorification. Just looking unto him, just being grateful to him, thankful to him. You know, you can never get prideful if you're always aware that it's just not you. That it's not in you to save yourself. You're not the reason that you're saved. You're not the reason that you're, that you're righteous. You're declared righteous because of Christ's righteousness, not your own. And so there's never a reason for us to be arrogant or prideful toward people who don't believe. Because if, if but for the grace of God, there go we. We are saved by grace through faith. And that's not of ourselves. It's a gift of God, not a result of works, lest anyone should boast. That boasting is that, that sense of pride someone has, that religious pride that I'm better than you. I don't do that. I don't live like these people. I live better. I'm a Christian. Well, you know what? You're a Christian because of the grace of God. You're a Christian because he saved you. He says, you didn't cho choose me. I chose you, right? Okay, so he says, as you received Christ Jesus, so walk in him. And he says, rooted and built up in him and established in the faith, just as you were taught, abounding in thanksgiving. So he says, to, I want you to be rooted in him. Christ is the solid rock upon which you stand. He is your solid foundation. He's the chief cornerstone and everything, the whole church is built upon him, right? And so your roots need to go down deep into Christ. A tree whose roots go down deep, they can access water even in the dry uh, of the summertime. When the sun is scorching out, if the roots go deep enough, they can, they, can, they can reach the water. And when the wind blows 100 miles an hour, that tree can stand because the roots go deep. He says, he says um, so walk in him rooted and then built up in him. Okay, so built up you can be built up. A tree can go t grow tall, 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 as long as the roots are, are, go down deep, as long as they go down deep into the soil. And if, and if our spiritual roots go deep into Christ and into his word, if we're filled with his spirit, we're saved by him, we're walking in him, we can be built up in him. And he says, and established in the faith, okay? Established means, um, you know, say say when I first started my business and it was like every day was kind of like, oh, you know, are we gonna make it? Are we have enough to get through this day? And, and as you grow and as you build, um, eventually there comes a point where, you know what? You're kind of established. We're okay now, right? We're gonna be okay. We have a long track record. We're, we're gonna be here no matter what happens. We're established, okay? I'm a business owner. At this point, you know, there we, we go through our ups and downs and we, we survive by the grace of God. But at the same time, um, we've reached a point by the grace of God in our business where we, we feel like we're sort of established now. Um, we're not so stressed out by every, every you know, wind of uh, struggle or, or economic downturn or whatever. He says, um, as you receive Christ Jesus, so walk in him, built up in him, rooted in, <laughs> sorry, rooted and built up in him and established in the faith just as you were taught. So don't veer off of what you were taught. Paphras gave you the gospel of faith in Christ Jesus unto salvation, okay? He gave you the gospel. So he says, just as you were taught, stay right there. Stay right there in that pocket, right in Christ, looking unto Christ every day, every moment, looking unto him to get you through, right? To, to build you up, to help you to be sanctified, to make you more like him, just as you were taught, abounding in thanksgiving. Why are we abounding in thanksgiving? Because we're always recognizing, always cognizant of the fact that it's him, not us. It's him, not us. It's his grace, not ours. It's his righteousness, not ours. It's his holiness, not ours. It's his power, not ours, right? And so we abound in thanksgiving, okay? And then he says, see to it that no one takes you captive. We're gonna get into this, I think, in the next video because I don't wanna go too long in this one, but he says, see to it that no one takes you captive, okay, by philosophy and empty deceit, according to human tradition, according to the elemental spirits of the world and not according to Christ. We're going to go into that in the next video. So um, we'll stop right here.